Welcome to Tech Talk, y'all. Hi, and welcome to Tech Talk, y'all, episode 337. I'm Adam Walker. And I'm Sanjay Parikh. And uh, we got a, a good episode for you today. Now, uh, later in this episode, we are going to deal with some of Apple's new releases. And we don't normally dwell on these, but there's a couple of things here that are worth talking about. And I'm going to ask Sanjay's advice about maybe some big shifts for me technologically. So stay tuned for that right before Weird and Wacky and Tech Rex. But in the beginning, uh, let's start with some legal stuff, I guess, because... We need to? I, I don't know. So what do we, what do we have yeah. first, Sanjay? So first up, Signal opposes a UK proposal. Uh, actually, they didn't even just oppose it. They said that if it gets enacted, they will leave the UK. They will not support Signal it wasn't, in the UK. This was the proposal that was going to basically take away end in uh, end in uh, Encryption. Oh Thank yeah. you. And, 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 I'm going to say subscription. <laughs> I'm like, where is my? I need more coffee today. This will take away end to end subscription, you're, right? You're, you're, yeah, and, and yes, yes. You're not going to get your CDs by mail anymore. <laughs> BMG <laughs> Music Club is gone for you, people in the UK. <laughs> oh, it's actually gone for all of us. Yeah. Uh, so it so would take away encryption, exist. and they're like, look, yeah. if we can't be encrypted, we're out. Like we're not. That's our thing. We're known for that thing. If we can't yeah. do that thing, we're gone. Right. Yeah, ba basically, um, yeah, I, I think it, it was something like you could still be encrypted, but then you wouldn't be allowed to share photos, videos, links, uh, basically everything that makes chatting yeah. useful. Right. Um, and they're like, yeah, that's not, that's not okay. Yeah, not okay. Um, not which okay. I appreciate that approach. Uh, and I suspect that if this happens, uh, Signal will leave the yeah. UK. Right. But there will probably still be a way to use yeah, Signal yeah, for sure. inside of the UK. Because come on. Well, yeah. uh, speaking of a way to use things, uh, New York passes legislation to ban, quote, addictive social media algorithms for kids. So this is specifically like the algorithm for TikTok or Reels in particular, the kind of the most notorious, where uh, it, it shows you new things that will capture your attention and make you stay on the app longer. So it's introducing you to new content other than just people that you followed. So it's not direct chronological. It's also not direct for followers. It's just new right. content. And I, I have mixed feelings about this because on the one hand, I see where they're trying to, to make sure kids aren't getting addicted into social media. And I, and I value that. On the other hand, the algorithm is actually what makes these apps good. Like, like I would not enjoy TikTok were it not for that algorithm that right. finds new things to show. That's the only reason I like it. It's the only thing that makes it good. And that's what makes it better than Reels and everything else because their algorithm for showing me new content is so much better. Yeah. And so it's, it's almost like saying like the best feature of this thing you can't use for kids under 18, which strikes me as weird. Right, but... We do the same thing with other things, right? A lot of people like alcohol. They think it makes them feel better, but you don't give it to kids. Yeah. Right? Like, so fair, I, fair. I, I think there's, and I'm with you, like, I think it's a tough line. And I think the argument from some of these companies is it's a First Amendment issue and their their ability to uh, freely do this. But we do restrict a lot of things, right? Yeah. Like, it's not a complete free-for-all. Like, you have kids in the cars. They need to have seatbelts. Uh, yeah. You know, that, okay. Yeah, it, it is a true. rule. Like yeah. we do have these rules because yeah. as a society, we're like, look, there is demonstrable harm to the these things, especially when you're of a certain age because you don't understand the things that are being done to you. Yeah. And what does this mean for society down the line? And so we try to pull those things back. Now, you know, I think everybody on this podcast, and you know, uh, I am not a fan of restricting some things like this, right. but- Right. I think there are some areas where it does potentially make sense, it, especially once we've had this lesson of like, we've done it and it's like, oh, this is not good. Yeah. Let's do something to make it less not good. It, it almost makes me wonder though, if they really need almost a separate app for, for users under 18, that's like, like Instagram for yeah. kids or something like that. Like to me, that would actually make a, a lot more sense right. than trying to like segment it off within the current app. And I feel like technologically yeah. it would be really difficult to do too. Um, I, I think all of this, honestly, is is very difficult to do uh, yeah. because how easy is it for a kid to say, "Nah, I'm 18," right? Oh, like, I mean, they yeah, they all do. They all do. They all do, yeah. right? Like, yeah, honestly, right. Uh, usually when I'm asked my birth date, uh, it's usually January 1, 1900. So, right. yeah, I mean, I mean that's obviously. kind of my go-to because even I obviously. don't want to give it. Yeah. Um, and so, 
you know, I think that is, you know, a different hurdle that we need yeah. to figure out and deal with. But I think kind of philosophically, I think this makes sense, right? Like, yeah. I, I think yeah. we've seen all the studies. We've talked about the studies. Oh, yeah, we on have. This yeah. Podcast it's before, addictive. Yeah. Where it's dangerous. It's better for kids not to have devices. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's so, true. yeah, I mean, uh, whatever okay. we can do to make society 10, Still 20, 30 years feelings. from now better. But yeah, I know. I feel yeah. you. I, I will say, though, uh, I, there are apps where I'd prefer to just have the chronological, like like Facebook's algorithm is terrible. Right. Like it's just what it serves <laughs> up is just so bad. Like just just give me a straight chronological logical algorithm, please, for the love. I, and you're so. like, you know, you own that Instagram thing over there. <sighs> yeah. And, and they've got an algorithm. It's so, but, I know, and, and it's better. It's like it's like Facebook is by far the worst. And then like Instagram and then TikTok. And I don't, I don't know where the others fall in that right. lineage. Yeah. yeah whatever. So. But talking about something that's not the worst, FCC's $8 billion phone subsidy survives a Supreme Court challenge. Um, that That's a little bit uh, extreme, I think. The Supreme Court basically just said, we're not going to listen to this appeal. Oh, okay. Um, and they didn't actually rule on it. They were just like, nah, we're good. Okay. Um, and so this is good. So if you don't know what the subsidy is, you've been paying for it uh, with every uh, phone line that you have. Mm. It's basically a fund that helps pay for telecom access to rural uh, America. So places okay. where there's not high density, it doesn't make fiscal sense for companies to go in and spend a lot of money to do, you know, wiring up for a high broadband speed right. uh, and telephone access. And, and this is basically the way that they've solved that problem. Interestingly, uh, but not surprisingly, the telecom companies are for this as well. Yeah, and they yeah, said this yeah. should stay because uh, they're the ones that get the money yeah, at the end of the day, yeah. right? So it's That's like, like uh, asking your kids, like, should we keep giving you an allowance? <laughs> Do you need money? I don't think so. Yeah, we should. We vote for that. Okay, How much so. more candy should we give you? All yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. that's that's, that's pretty obvious. So, well, next uh, up, uh, next up, uh, Tokyo Hope's new Tinder-like matchmaking app will curb population decline. So, a couple of things from this article. First is, I think, <laughs> I think it said there's like 1.2 children for every woman right now, which is like right. so. There's been a declining population for a while. And it's going to become a, a pretty serious problem in in the coming in the future, so that's a big deal, and, and and that's interesting in and of itself. But then they are going to create an app where you have to verify your like photo yourself with your photo ID. You yep. have to verify your income level because yep. apparently women over there are particularly attracted to income level, which I I have no comments on whatsoever. And <laughs> uh, and then. And, and then they try to match you for more long-term relationships rather yep. than, um, shall we just say, short-term interactions. So, right. Um, I, I have. I don't even. I don't know where to even start. I don't know. This is wild to me. This, so this was super fascinating to me because I don't know. Like we've heard of city governments getting involved in apps and things like that. Yeah. There was one that I saw found super fascinating. I never tagged it for us, but uh, the city of Boston released an app for your phone that would then monitor you when you're driving to find where potholes were. And so then they could just go and fill I was like, oh, that's such a great idea, that's right? That's brilliant. Isn't oh that my such gosh. a good idea? Yeah, but, it's great. Okay. But this is like next level to think mm -hmm. about like our yeah. demographic issues and then be like, okay, well, people aren't getting married. Yeah. We need to figure out how to get them together, <laughs> get them to have families, right? Like, like what's, what's next in this? <laughs> uh, you got them matched up. Yeah. Um, now there's yeah. like a wedding service and then like, okay, why aren't you having, like, this is worse <coughs> than like Asian parent. And I can say this as an Asian parent, right? Yeah. Like, uh, you know, like <laughs> traditionally Asians, like you get through college and then, okay, when are you getting married? Okay. The minute you get married, okay. When are you having what? kids? Yeah. Right. And the right. minute you have kids, like you, they don't care about you anymore. Basically. Yeah, yeah, like you, yeah, they don't ask yeah. you, yeah. like they don't ever ask you how you're doing or anything right. else. It's all about right. the kids at that point. Yeah. Right. So this is basically the Japanese government becoming your parents. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I, and to me, it's like, I, I, I really wish I could have been a fly on the wall during that government meeting. They're like, okay, we got to get more people married. How are we going to do that? <laughs> like, like, and not just married, but procreating. They need marriage. We need procreation. Like, like what? Like, I'm, I, what's I, happening? I, I, yeah, I think they've missed, like, just the general, like, market-based 
uh, approaches that they could have taken on this. Yeah. Because I bet you, if you unravel the layers a little bit, part of the reason why is if you've ever been to Tokyo, and I, I lived there for a few months back in the 90s, right? it's packed in. Right. Yeah. So oh, yeah. it's like if you're even thinking about having a family, you're like, this is going to be super expensive. Right. Because yeah. and you you can't have a yard. You can't have like it's right. just so many people there. Yeah. And I think it's those kinds of things that have caused this situation. And so if you start thinking about like, OK, maybe we can incent people with just throw money at them. Yeah. Uh, if you get married, uh, you get this you much get money. If you, yeah. Every kid you have, you get this much money. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. and that helps you afford a place to live and, right. and afford raising the kids and doing all those things. Right. I think that would over time probably help fix yeah. some of these problems. Probably more but, than an app I'm thinking. So, but maybe the app was cheaper, you know, it was yeah. like a million and something bucks and, and you know what? If it fixes the problem, it fixes the problem. I mean, I, I love the idea that it's got real pictures on it. At least that's right. something. Like that's a step in the right. I don't. I don't know anything about the dating apps, right? I yeah, pre-date those by a long way. But like, at yeah. least it's got real photos. So like, that's that's yeah. got to be. For something. I've heard so. there are problems with fake, uh, yeah. fake profiles on things like that. So uh, maybe yeah. this run by the government will fix that. Mm. Uh, something that's not run by the government that fixes something that I didn't know was a problem, but I don't maybe think it's it would be really cool. I think it's ridiculous uh, and pointless. <laughs> Nokia CEO makes the world's first immersive, in quotes, phone call. Uh, immersive, and they're describing it as immersive video as well as audio. Yeah. As well. So it's, yeah, so it's like, you know, if you like, turn your head to the left, you can hear them more out of your right ear than right you can ear, yeah. your left ear. Like so it's like would be, directional, like they yeah. were actually there. And, 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 and like and this makes phone, sense in virtual reality. Like this, like uh, there's a game I play in virtual reality where this is the case, where I can be looking at somebody if right. I turn my head. And, come, and that makes sense. Like you're in virtual reality with people. It's a spatial sort of thing. But video is not, it doesn't make it, that seems so silly to me. Honestly, yeah. Like, so I don't. what's funny is, is my phone, I've got a Samsung phone mm -hmm. and I've got Samsung earbuds. You can actually turn this on like spatial audio for that. So when you turn your head away from the thing, it's coming in your left ear or mm -hmm. your right ear, whatever way yeah. you've turned uh, for like a Netflix video or, you know, oh, a yeah, movie yeah. or something like that. It, it works for that. I turned it on once and I was like, oh, this is weird. And I yeah. turned it right off uh, because I don't even know if I that. turn my head, I don't. Yeah. I don't know. It's just weird. Mm -mm. Like, I don't need that. I'm good. I shouldn't yeah. have to have my head pointed at you. That's the whole point of having wireless headphones. For real. So yeah. I don't know. But but the other part of me is like, maybe this is getting like the steps to those holograms that you see on Star Trek and stuff. Yeah. And then you can, yeah. you know, like interact with it. Like it's we're getting there. Show, so. I think we're, we're a ways off, but we're, we're getting there. Speaking of things that are a ways off, uh, yeah. <laughs> Humane warns AI pen owners to immediately... Stop using its charging case. Yes, that's the charging case that just came out with the device that nobody likes because it's too slow. And they're also Isn't this the company that's getting sold? And they're trying to sell, I believe yeah. it was it were they trying to sell the HP for a billion? They were trying to sell for a billion dollars. I saw the I saw the article it was a billion dollars. Right. I thought it was to HP, but it could have been to somebody. I forget who it was to. Um, I'm but, thinking they're not gonna get a billion dollars, especially with this new news. I'm thinking they'll be lucky to get <laughs> Anywhere, I, they, I, they'll be lucky not to go bankrupt. I, I, I think, and I think this is, I mean, and, and I don't mean, I don't mean that in an unkind way. Like, I yeah. think this technology is amazing and well ahead of its time. And I think ten years from now, there will be the the right. the consumer market will be ready for this, and the electronics will be capable of doing what they were trying to do at a fast enough speed to make it palatable. Right. Um, I don't think it's no, no one's there yet. They're just too far ahead of their time on this. So that's what I think is happening. And I think it's unfortunate for them. And it was a great vision and uh, just it didn't quite execute as well as. It, yeah, I mean, like, like most so. things kind of new edge, uh, innovative, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Timing is everything. Yeah, uh, that's right. Too early, yeah. too late. Not going to work. No. Something that is going to work apparently, or, or not going to work on this platform at least. Uh, Apple blocks. So we're in our Apple segment here. Yeah. Apple blocks PC emulator from being available in iOS App Store and third-party app stores. What I did not know until reading this was, even though there are third-party app stores, Apple still controls access to those as well. I didn't, I didn't know that. that. Yeah, I didn't know that either, which is, I mean, I guess it, because they're going on the Apple device, they control access, but because it's third party, they don't get the revenue from it somehow. Right. Uh, maybe that, so that's, 
Interesting. So this feels like that was a half-baked solution then to this issue. I mean, maybe, maybe not. Um, it, de- it depends. I mean, I assume Apple wants to control what goes on their devices to maintain the integrity of how the device runs and how the, and make sure the apps run properly. That's always been the That's kind of That's what they're going to say. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and honestly, like, I... I tend to be okay with a little more control there because I'm I'm one of those users like I just want things to work really well all all the time and not have to deal with crappy apps though there still are crappy apps. So and, and so, there's yeah. been apps that have viruses in them yeah, in the yeah, app store yeah. too. Yeah, there's so stuff to get through. Like yeah. a, but mean, then but but this in particular like they they thought they would be able to get through because game emulators are now allowed right. in the Apple store and and Apple's like yeah game emulator and a PC emulator are different right. and therefore that's a no. I, okay, I guess I don't. I don't have an opinion. I don't. I don't know. I don't want to emulate a PC on my phone anyway. Uh, I can see myself wanting to emulate a Nintendo on my phone for sure. Right, but a PC. Yeah, I'm good. That's fine. So yeah. speaking and of they, Nintendo, I was at a s- friend's house. He had a yeah. real Nintendo. His the original Nintendo with the original games. I was like, is that an original Nintendo? He goes, yeah, man, that's my Nintendo from when I was a kid. I was like, dude, Wait. you're my hero. How did he hook it up to a TV? Because TVs don't have any of the wiring like the old TVs do. You know, I didn't even think to ask him that. I need to ask him. Uh, and, and he did mention that Dunk Hunt, the Duck Hunt gun didn't work properly. Uh-huh. And I was like, I, pro- I was like, it might be related to your TV's refresh rate because of the way the gun functioned originally. It did like a yep. quick flash and it might not flash correctly on your TV. And that might be why it doesn't work. Uh, and I like explained how the Duck Hunt gun. Do you know how the Duck Hunt gun works? I, I actually don't know how the duck hunt. It was gun. crazy. It's, so I'm pretty. If I remember correctly, camera? yeah. The way the, the way it worked is there was like an optical sensor on the duck hunt gun uh-huh. that would sense like like one single like white square, and when you when you pulled the trigger, the screen would actually flash black with like one white square where the duck was, and uh-huh. if the sensor saw the white square, it knew you'd hit the duck, and if it didn't, it knew you didn't hit the duck. Like that's how it worked. And, and the flash was so quick, your eye didn't didn't catch it. So like that's huh. how like, like some some I might be I might not be quite right about that but some version of that is how it worked right so, anyway I, I've never go. actually thought about the duck hunt gun but that makes sense yeah that, well I mean it's like it's, it, it was wild at the time it's like wait I can point this at one part of the screen and it knows and I pointed and it, how, how does it know it was like so <laughs> it was so bewildering to me as a child so yeah all right uh, more on the Apple section forget LastPass Apple unveils passwords manager app at WWDC twenty 24. Now, um, I got to ask, I didn't actually yeah. watch the stream of this, I but didn't. did they roll this out? Like, look at this amazing thing that nobody else has. And we've done it. And we've done passwords, no, but there were lots of things they did at that that were similar. Like, it's like, like the whole, like, Hey, look, you can place icons anywhere you want on the home right. screen. Isn't this great? And it's like, that's the kind of thing you probably shouldn't brag about. That's been around for way too long for you to brag yeah. about. Like that's been around for like 20 years, like, like, right. like 15 years, you know, like, come on. So, I mean, but this one was, it was more about the deep integration into Apple products. Yeah. And, and, and it basically seems to do everything that my, pa- I use Dashlane. It does everything that I think Dashlane does. I think it does everything Bitwarden does. It's like, I mean, sh- maybe I will consider it. I don't, I don't know. Um, Except it doesn't do Android. It right. doesn't do Linux. Right. It does do Windows. Right, right, Because right. they're right. like, oh, there's enough people there. Right. Which I also thought was very interesting because Generally, they never make software for Windows. Yeah, right. Um, they did iTunes. That's the only other piece of software that I think I could name that Apple has made that's on yeah, you're right. Windows. Yeah. Right? Wait, look, re- read this next article, and then I want to talk about that, and then I want to talk about I, I have a more holistic thing I'm sort of struggling through that I want to, I want to talk through here for a second. So okay. get the next one. Uh, so the next one is introducing Apple intelligence. Side note, brilliant marketing right there because you named it. AI as short, it was just, when I saw that, I was like, oh, this is super smart. But anyways, so smart. Uh, introducing Apple intelligence, the personal intelligence system that puts powerful generative models at the core of iPhone, iPad, and Mac. Yeah. And so a lot of what they're doing is local device-based stuff. I love that. They are doing some cloud-based stuff yes. too, because I was reading there and it, but it's not really clear how that works. It, it's like backed by cloud-based it, AI it's, stuff. It's, but. it's basically like the model looks at the request and assesses if it can handle it locally or not. And if it Got cannot, it. It, it pitches it off to the cloud into full into full uh, chat GPT 4.0 model. Uh, that's what it does. Right. So it right. so it does so it integrates. 
So it seems to integrate selectively with like, it's not fully powered by ChatGPT as best I can tell, but it's at least partially powered by ChatGPT in a sense, if that makes right. sense. So it's so, and in theory, most of your more sensitive questions are going to be local. Right. Yeah. yeah. And going off device, which yeah. is good. Yeah. Yeah. I well, think. And, and, well, and, and I mean, in, in all fairness, like, and I know you're not an Apple fan and I respect that, but Apple is pretty secure. Like, like they're very security minded, more so than most companies are too. So that makes me at least marginally more comfortable with it as well. Which kind of brings me to my larger struggle here that I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pitch at you. So, so Apple's about to deeply integrate AI into its platform in in a way that's never been done before, right? Right. Like, like to a degree that's never been done before, to the point where. Like, for example, one of the examples in, in the pitch was like, if you got an email confirmation of your flight number and then you got a reservation number here, you can ask Siri, uh, like uh, Siri will a- already know about your flight because it came in your email. And then you can it, and you can just ask about your information right there in Siri and Siri already knows. And the problem with that is I don't use Apple Mail, right? I use something. Uh-huh. I use Spark. And same thing with my calendar. Like I don't use Apple Calendar. I use Google Calendar. And so now I'm wondering, is this the inflection point where I need to consider going all in on the full Apple suite of everything so that AI can really like fully be utilized in everything that I do? Right. Or is that a terrible idea? Like, and, and I would say like, in, in, in like, mm. so in, in, so in to kind of continue my thinking, like you and I, and I think Mickey too, have been kind of really struggling with like the whole Google suite because Google tends to sunset everything (laughs) and you can't really trust that what you've got is going to be around for a prolonged period of time. Whereas Apple doesn't tend to do that as much, but you still theoretically have a similar problem. Like what happens if you, if you go on this platform and it goes away in 10 years. So I'm, I, I can't decide, is it worth doing that or not? Like, what are your, what are your thoughts? Yeah. I, yeah, it's, it's, that's a hard one. Um, because I think there's a couple of things we dig on Google a lot for sunsetting things, but truth be told, all companies do this Yeah, that's right. Um, that's right. to some degree. I'm sure we, if we dig enough, we could probably find products and service and Apple has definitely done it. Oh, yeah, for now sure. that I'm thinking about it, like the Newton back I mean, in even the day, iTunes. you mentioned iTunes earlier. They, they don't do There is no iTunes. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. See, I, yeah. I didn't know that because yeah. I don't, I don't use any of that, but right. Newton iTunes, like all these things they've sunset over time. So you know, I think it's I think it's a dual edged sword, right? You got to figure out which way you're you're happy living. Um, yeah. You could go all in, and then you get the benefits of this technology, this this new stuff. But then you also then have to live with the risk that all your stuff is in one place. If yeah. something happens, it's all at risk all at the same time. Right. Right. Um, or or if they decide to sunset things, and then you want to move, or if you just want to move because there's but, something better. You got to move everything. Instead yeah, of just a but, few things, right? But alternatively, like, for example, I could actually keep Apple Calendar and just integrate Apple Calendar into... Or sorry, I keep Google Calendar and just integrate Google Calendar into Apple Calendar. So I can do right. that. I can keep my, my G Suite for my own custom domain and just integrate that into Google Mail. So then... So it's still... It's still separate. I still have more control over it. Right. But I'm not, but I'm still using the Apple product that would give me the AI tool. So it's really just the... It's almost just like the end the end user for me is different as far as what I'm using. Right. But the actual background infrastructure could theoretically be the same. Yeah. W- one thing I would say is, is whatever platform you end up on, think about maybe doing, figuring out a way to do backups of that data. So yeah. Um, yeah. I'll tell you, I, I don't think I've yeah. talked about this on the, on the show before, but um, I have a, a storage server here at the house and then I actually have a calendar on there. And then as each day goes, it is a very manual process because I've not figured out how to automate it. And maybe it doesn't even make sense because it's so few items. But every day, once I get events done, I remove them from my Google calendar and then paste them into my local calendar so that I have a <laughs> accurate historical record that's local that I can yeah. back up very easily. Um, but then also G Suite in general, there is an adapter for this storage system mm. that actually hooks in and backs up my email, my Google uh, Office, whatever they call it, Docs right. and Sheets. Yeah. And it yeah. backs up all of those files. Right. So, I mean, yeah, in theory, they have yeah. backups too, and yeah. they should all be safe. But sometimes 
you know, we've talked about this. They'll just decide to kick you off their platform. Yeah. And yeah. all your stuff is gone, right? Yeah. So think about like, how do I do backups regardless of where your data is yeah. uh, and do backups yeah. of cloud services, which is, I know, something that nobody ever really thinks about because it's in I the know. cloud. It's yeah. all backed it's safe. up. It's safe in the cloud. It's safe, right? But Safe-ish. Yeah. I mean, you I will never, say like, that's why, I, that's why I store, like what I end up doing is I store photos in two different cloud places because mm-hmm. I'm not likely to get kicked off of both at the same time. Right. And so, and like, it's too cumbersome to have them locally. I do have a, I do have a local hard drive backup of like really old stuff. Yeah. Um, but like the newer stuff, it just goes into two different cloud backups and, and yeah, that hopefully is good enough for now. Yeah. So. We, we do one cloud <laughs> service and then actually the storage service here, which acts as a cloud. Yeah. Um, yeah. we go into that and then that one actually backs up into other clouds. Yeah. Uh, because got to clouds me, on clouds on clouds right there. Right. Exactly. To yeah. me, photos are probably the most yeah. critical thing of, any data that we have sure because You're i can never get them back yeah i can live without yeah. my 15 year old tax returns yeah but without my photos like the, yeah you can't the, there's no recreating that no no amount of ai fixes that's that right. problem right there. that's right time for the weird and wacky segment abominable snowman oh, not an axe murderer. one of the tas turned out to be a bot. All right. And Weird and Wacky, we have one for you. And Sanjay, I imagine you'll have a lot to say on this. Uh, yep. University suspends students for AI tool. It gave them $10,000 prize to make. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll tee it up and then you yeah. can rail on this. So, so these students pitched an idea for an AI tool to their university, which Sanjay can name the university in a minute, to the university. The university was like, that's an amazing idea. We're going to give you a $10,000 prize. So you can go make that idea. Then the students made the idea. Then uh, what did they call it? The ethics council or the, the some council honor, honor council. The honor council is like no, 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 no. That's dangerous, and it could quote could be used for cheating. And so then the students got suspended from the same school that paid them money, gave them money, honored them with money to build this actually amazing tool and promoted the fact that they did this. As a great example of entrepreneurship. So part of the reason why I tag this is this is a local hometown story. It's with one of my alma maters, Mm -hmm. Emory University, Mm -hmm. right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. This is so dumb. (laughs) This basically boils down to IT people being upset about the use of API tokens to hack into Canvas, which is a system that almost all schools, I think, use. Correct. Yeah. Um, to kind of manage his coursework. Uh, I know Georgia Tech uses Canvas too. Yep. Um, yep. But that's what API tokens are for. Canvas's own documentation says you can use the API tokens to connect other apps into your Canvas account. And the tool that these students made, it's called 8Ball. Yeah basically would take all of your course materials over the first version. You had to upload your course materials as PDFs to it. Right. Right. And then it used AI. The second version, just you hooked it into your class and then it would take all the content and then create flashcards for you yep. so that you could better learn the material. And not only that. And, fa- and, pr- and, and practice quizzes too. Practice and quizzes. Practice too. quizzes. Yeah. Professors were telling their students they should use this app to better learn their material at Emory University. And I just, uh, and, and, and what this highlights is that schools, even within themselves, have no idea what no to idea. do about AI. It's, it, I mean, it's almost like it's, um, and I'm, I mean, and may, I don't know how much controversy there was around the, the invention of the calculator. Right. But like <laughs> at some point, like they had to be pissed off that it's like, wait, they don't have to do it on paper. They can use this device. That's ridiculous. And then at some point people have to realize, no, when they're adults, they're just going to use the device. Like that's right. Like, that's the same. The same thing's true for AI. Like they're just going to use it down the road. Why would we not train them on a, an appropriate way to use that tool now? Right. And, it, and why not harness it to, and it, it was claimed that it was going to be used for cheating yeah. Even though it has never been used for cheating, never they could yeah. never point no, not, to at least a not use of cheating. Of. Yeah, yeah, right. they could never point to it, and they even said that. Yeah, and it's like, why would you not use a tool to help encourage students to learn better? Yeah, it's clearly made for that, not to cheat, not to do anything else. It's just, yeah. it's non 
sensical. It's crazy. And I'm crazy. sorry. I'm like, I'm involved in a lot of things over at Emory. I'm sorry. This does yeah. not make any sense. Mm -hmm. I think the business school was doing the right thing by promoting mm -hmm. these students and yep. celebrating them for being innovative. And then whoever this honor council is and, and the IT people that got all up in arms about this, just idiotic. Uh, yeah. and I, I, oh, yeah, just frustrated. Okay, Adam, it is tech wreck time. What do you have for us this week? All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to figure out how to describe this without getting a particular political uh, active party coming at me. So, um, <clears throat> nah, so here's the thing. At you anyway. It's okay. Here's the thing. Back in 2016, we had this election that was somewhat divisive, and uh, I basically. I found that I couldn't handle Facebook during that time because uh, I, uh, for lack of a better term, I, I just lost a lot of respect for a lot of people. I'll just leave it at that. And I, you know, same. We're gearing up. It's the same thing as it basically uh, that's coming back. And um, I've decided that I want to retake Facebook a little bit for myself, like be able to actually use it some, not much, but some. So I've recently rediscovered the Facebook unfollow button, and that is my tech rec to you all <laughs> kind and generous people is that, listen, you don't have to unfriend them. Uh, and I don't unfriend people specifically because I feel like maybe someday I'll share something that might improve their lives in some way or help them to think more deeply on a subject. And I, I want that opportunity for them. But I don't need the opportunity for them to influence my life. And therefore, I will unfollow them and never see anything they post again which is glorious. So uh, I highly recommend unfollowing as many people as you possibly can on Facebook because it just makes your life better. Uh, and I don't, I don't recommend unfollowing people that you disagree with. I, I'm actually fine with following people I disagree with. What I, what I, my criteria for unfollowing people uh -huh. is if they're, being, uh, if they're being a jerk on Facebook, <laughs> and I'll, use, I, I use, I'll just use the term jerk as opposed to what I really want to say, <laughs> um, but if they're being a jerk on Facebook or they're posting things that I consider to be uh, obnoxious or very unkind, those aren't people that I want to have anything to do with. If you, we can have mm -hmm. a we can have a, a, a disagreement on politics or religion, whatever. That's fine. But if you're going to be unkind and obnoxious and self centered about it, I don't need you. I don't need your content in my life, and I will unfollow you. So yeah, uh, that's my nicest way of saying it. So if the Facebook unfollow button, you should use it. You should use it liberally. It's very freeing. So, yeah. Mm. Isn't there a, a similar thing on LinkedIn where you can stay connected, but you don't see their updates or something? Oh, I don't like know. That? I'll have to look for that too. Oh, that might be my next week's tech rack. All right. <laughs> oh, and I will say somebody did recommend they're like, Hey, you can snooze people on Facebook. I'm like, yeah, but it only snoozes for 30 days. I don't want to see these people's posts in 30. I don't want to see them ever again in my whole life. Like, I'm sorry. If you post a rebel flag, we're, I don't ever want to see your update again. Ever, 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 <laughs> ever, 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 <laughs> ever, 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 ever. So how, how, how about ever, ever, ever? Um, do I need to keep going? I can about, keep going. How about five years from now? Five years from now? <laughs> no, I'm no? good. Still I'm ever. good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sanjay, what's, what's your tech rack? Um, I've got something a little bit more pedestrian than yours. Uh, you know, every, every now and again, uh, you need to measure things around the house and yeah. Pulling yeah. out that that metal tape measure thing. It's all bendy that, and breaking that, and And then terrible. whips back and you, yeah. you end up, you're afraid of like you're going to take an your eye eyeball out. or something. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, instead, the Hoto laser measuring tool, this little guy right here is perfect for this. Okay. USB-C powered. It's got a battery on board. It's a laser measuring device with a little display on there that instantly tells you the distance from where you're measuring to where you're measuring to. Okay. And I got to say, I actually compared it against a actual measuring tape because I wanted to understand how <laughs> accurate it was. <laughs> Come on. Why are you laughing? You knew I was going to do that. You knew I was going to do that. <laughs> I love that. I love that about you, man. Because like, I would have been like, yeah, that looks like 13 feet. And that would have been the extent of my <laughs> testing right there. Like that's, that's about right. And you're like, nope, let's see exactly how accurate this baby is. <laughs> yeah. We, we, I, it's all about the standards and weights and measures. And yeah. like, let's, let's, let's go to the NIST and make sure that this is dead on accurate. Um, uh, but this thing is is great. And given the size of this thing, if you're watching the video, you can see yeah, how small this guy is. Yeah. It's super tiny. 
Um, this guy cost me 40 bucks when I bought it for, off of Amazon. If you use the link in the show notes, it's on sale right now for 30 bucks, which to me is, is a fantastic deal. The battery seems to last forever. I barely ever recharge this guy. Okay. Um, it just sits in my, my toolkit. And then yeah. if I ever need a measuring tape, I just pull this puppy out. What's great too about these is that when you've got a tall ceiling, like oh, yeah. a foyer that's two yeah. stories, like yeah. you can actually measure how tall that is without yeah. killing yourself trying to get a tape measure up there. What What is the first thing that you measured with that? That's what I want to know. Uh, I don't know. Probably like the width of some room or something. <laughs> okay. All right. I was just curious. So, I, I mean, yeah. I use it around the house for like, you know, making sure things are going to fit in the house. Yeah. yeah. And, and like we went through a house renovation and everything. And so just making sure I really understood yeah. like plans are one thing you got to measure the real life, uh, real life stuff of it. So, yeah. um, yeah. this has been fantastic for that. So highly, yeah. highly recommended. And just more in general, this company Hoto, this is the only product I have from them. I think that's how you say their name, but they've got a number of other products that seem very, very well designed. Okay. Some of them don't have good reviews. So I, you know, be careful, mm. but you know, the great thing about Amazon is you can return it at any time. Well, yeah, you can every day. So Love it. get those puppies and try it out and return it if you don't like it. So, there you go. All right, Sanjay, how can our listeners find and connect with you? They can find me at sanjaypark.com. What about you, Adam? Find me on my website, adamjwalker.com. Do, do, do.